Okay, we should be good to go. Okay. Welcome to uh, a Wednesday night with the Zoning Board of Appeals. I will tell you a brief overview of how the meeting will be run in case you've never had the pleasure of spending an evening with us, but I would at this time like to welcome uh, our newest board member, Chris Merwin. Uh, Chris is replacing Nate Everly, who resigned due to work com commitments. So Nate was a good loyal member and we thank him for his service, but we're very excited to have Chris here with us. The meeting will be run this way. We have a total of eight different variances that we're hearing tonight. You're asking for a variance because you want us to take an existing zoning rule or law and change it just specially for you. So we're going to ask you when you tell us about it to tell us why it's going to be a hardship for you uh, if you don't get this one changed. Uh, we, the, if that is changed, then they uh, it will stay with the property uh, forever. So you can't just take it with you say, oh, well, I had permission to build six attachments to my garage. So wherever I go, I'm going to do that. No, you don't. The property's there. And it will run this, this way. This is a quasi legal proceeding. We have probably the best court reporter in Northwest Ohio who's going to be taking all of the minutes. So I'm going to ask you when you come up to testify or when you're testifying through Zoom, that you'll start off by giving your name and address and please speak as clearly as we can through these masks so that she can, uh, can hear and understand what we're saying. I will read the variances. I will then ask the city to, to show us the existing zoning law that you're asking us to change for you. And then I will call you to come up to the podium or at your Zoom and tell us why not being granted this variance is considered a hardship for you. The board will, will then have a public hearing where the board will ask you questions. Uh, we'll talk among ourselves and we'll close the public hearing. We'll go into a private hearing. We're all gonna stay right here. And we'll discuss it, we'll come out of the private, and we'll, we'll vote. And you will know tonight whether or not your request for your variance has been granted. If it has not been granted, you always have the option of going to the Court of Common Pleas. That's why it's a legal proceeding. So I'm going to ask you, I will ask those who are here if they're going to testify to please stand. Those who are home, you don't have to stand, but please raise your right hand. Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do? Okay. Yeah. All right, you're all considered now to be sworn in. If you're going to speak and you weren't sworn in, you please tell me so that I can swear you in because you have to be sworn in. I'm now going to ask for approval of the minutes of the September 9th meeting. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. It looks like everybody who is on Zoom is muted, which is good. If you're not going to be test, if you're not going to be speaking, we would appreciate it if you would um, mute yourself. Our first request for variance is Michael and Sophia Gerald, 1202 Charles Street, have requested a variance to allow the construction of an eight foot by 12 foot six inch accessory building, which would encroach four feet into the five foot required setback from both the side and rear property lines. Heather? Yes, I just need a minute here. I'm gonna get my slideshow started. Okay, so under the zoning code section 150.90 B2 in residential districts and other districts where residential uses are allowed, an accessory building with an area equal to or less than 160 square feet may be located no closer than five feet to the side and rear lot lines and may not exceed 12 feet in height. Here is an aerial view of the property showing it is a corner lot, so Westwood and Charles. And using pictometry, we show some views of the home. So you can get an idea of the front, rear, and the side properties. Here's looking at the back of the property. Here's another view of the rear of the property. And looking more towards the front. And here's actual pictures looking from the corner where both streets do meet. And then here's looking from Westwood and to the rear yard. 
And then here's looking from Charles back, trying to get back to that corner to show you a little bit of how that looks today. And then the applicant had some nice sketches, I thought, in the file that show you a little better detail of what the red would look like with the five foot setback. And then with the one foot setback, I didn't include every picture in my presentation, but um, just to give you an idea of what that would look like. And then here is the sketch that was submitted within your packet. He does already have a permit for the shed to comply with the five feet from the rear and the side, but he is wishing to get, um, again, one foot from the property lines as requested. We did receive one email from a neighbor. I gave you a copy at your seats and I will read that into the record. Um, the email is from Julie Rabin, Monday, October 5th, 2020. At 6.01 p.m. it was received into the planning department email. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading you the wrong one already. I'm sorry. I'm that's another say, case. I, I, don't think I that's apologize. <laughs> All these cases, I'm getting jumbled. Um, let's start over. This email is from Alan Jaffe. Received Thursday, October 1st, 2020 at 2.15 p.m. to the planning department general email. Um, copy Laura Leventhal. Regarding 1202 Charles zoning variance, we have no problem with the requested variance to install an accessory building within the side and rear setbacks. Alan Jaffe and Laurel Leventhal, 1209 mm -hmm. Charles Street. So that was it as far as the correspondence we received. An advertisement was placed in the newspaper of general circulation as required. A site notice was placed at the site. The other notices required by the Ministry of Code were posted in the proper time and location. A letter was mailed, first class mail, to the tax mailing address of the owner and adjoining property owners. Therefore, all the procedural requirements for the hearing have been met. Thank you. Mr. Gerald. Michael? Sorry, I was on, unmuting myself. Okay, would you please state your name and, and address for the court reporter and then tell us why you're requesting this variance for, and what your hardship would be? Yes, ma'am. My name is Michael Gerald. I live on uh, 1202 Charles Street. And uh, one of the main reasons I uh, requested this variance is uh, because my house is on a corner lot and uh, where my house is situated on the property. I have a uh, larger front yard than a backyard. So uh, in the backyard, every square foot kind of counts, uh, especially with uh, my two little kids uh, to have a uh, nice backyard to play in. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, maximize the amount of play space in the backyard for them. Um, in addition to that, I did talk to uh, I was able to talk to two of the three uh, adjacent property owners, uh, my neighbors, uh, and uh, both of them had agreed uh, that they did prefer the uh, shed to be located uh, further back to the lot line uh, because of the uh, current foliage that is back there already, or existing foliage, um, that would not obstruct any of their views uh, in that new location. Uh, the current location uh, by building code would uh, kind of hinder their view a little bit. And uh, my last point is uh, when mowing the lawn, if I were to place it with, uh, within the confines of the building code, five foot setback um, with an existing tree to the corner of where that shed footprint would be, I wouldn't, able, wouldn't be able to uh, uh, ride my uh, riding mower or push mow uh, around that tree without heading it. So uh, those are my reasons for uh, requesting those variants. Thank you. Is there anyone here who wishes to address this request? Members of the board, do you have any questions for uh, Michael? Any comments? You're a quiet group tonight. All right, I'm gonna close the public hearing and let's discuss. Nothing. Nope. Okay. It makes sense. Right. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. We'll come out of the public hearing and I will uh, ask for a motion. I'll so move. Second. second. Chris, did you second? Second. Okay. Chris. Uh, we have the motion and, and it's been seconded. Will the secretary call the roll, please? Ennis? Yes. Mowen? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Ostrowski? Yes. Flager? Yes. Waddle? Yes. The request for your variance has been granted. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome.
The second one is Jamie and Leanne Vasquez, 902 North Prospect Street, have requested a variance to allow the construction of a six foot tall fence in the 25 foot front yard setback corner lot. Fence would be in the front yard that faces Frazee Avenue, which would be two feet taller than the maximum allowable height of four feet. Heather? Thank you. Under section 150.91 fences, a fence erected on a lot line or within a setback may not exceed in height in the following. Section B, four feet when placed within a required front yard setback, but must not be installed in such a matter as to violate section 150.05, which is a visibility triangle, which is this not near that, the corner where the visibility triangle is. Also under section 150.16, bulk and density regulations, this is where we get the building setbacks. So again, the front yard setback is defined here. It's zoned R2 single family. So you'll see front yard is 25 feet. So again, the fence that is six foot tall cannot be placed within the front yard setback. Here's an aerial view of the property. So you can see, again, it's on the corner of North Prospect and Frazee. Using pictometry, we show you some different views of the home again. Here's the front of the house. Here's looking at the other front, which would be along North Prospect. Here's looking at the rear of the home, the side of the home. And then here's some pictures again of the front that would again be the Frazee side. And then this would be the prospect side or front. I hate to use the different terminology. It can be confusing with corner lots. And looking again, here is the actual current split rail that is there that they wish to replace with the six foot. And again, that's looking from Frazee. Another view backing off a little further. The sketch that was submitted as part of your packet. So you'll see they have it highlighted there in yellow where they would like the six foot. Um, also to give you a little bit of history, there was a variance issued for the property back in July of 1991 to have a six foot high fence but it was only to go along the side yard setback within the 10 foot setback back then. So it wasn't necessarily in the front. It didn't loop around that front portion. So again, just to give you a history, I do have a copy of that. If you do wanna see that, the application, and then the original sketch was actually not very detailed, but um, that's why they have to get one that, um, since it's not the same. I just wanted to clarify that. But if you do wanna see a copy, I don't know if you wanna pass that around. We did not receive any written or verbal correspondence about the request. An advertisement was placed in the newspaper of general circulation as required. A site notice was placed at the site. The other notices required by the administrative code were posted in the proper time and location. A letter was mailed first class mail to the tax mailing address of the owner and adjoining property owners. Therefore, all the procedural requirements for the hearing have been met. Thank you. Jamie? Yes. Okay. You want to state your name and address and then explain to this, uh, the board why you're re requesting this variance? Yes, uh, my name is Jamie and this is my wife, Leanna Velasquez. Uh, we're at 902 North Prospect. And uh, the reason why we are requesting this is because, uh, well, mainly because we have three little children, uh, three and under, all close beside each other. <laughs> and uh, we do live on that corner lot. Uh, our our backyard is, you keep saying the front yard, but it is our backyard. It is away from that corner. Uh, we're prospecting uh, uh, crazy is are, are at. And the reason why we're requesting this is because of the safety of our kids. Uh, the main reason why is we, we live by, uh, in town, we have a lot of people walking by and riding their bikes and, you know, all the different activities that they do. And we just want to say to our kids that people aren't looking in at our kids. Uh, that's the biggest thing we have. Mm -hmm. so, so just to protect our kids, that uh, they can have a safe environment uh, to be playing in our backyard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone here wish to address this request? Members of the board, do you have any questions for Jamie? No, there's uh, the original 1991. A question. I don't know. Sure. Specifically yeah. Jamie. <laughs> um, you can address it to anybody. <laughs> okay. There's a, a driveway just to the. What would that be? Uh, uh, 
piece. West. So I guess that'd be the southern part of their yard. North is their backyard. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Um, so your your neighbor down, Breezy. Have yes. They, have do you know? Will they be able to pull out of their driveway without with seeing, being able to see down toward Prospect? Yes, they should because their their yard is in between the driveway and our fence. Okay. Their front their front yard. I can pull up an aerial view. Do you want me to do that? You can see it better. Yeah, let's yeah, let's, be... let's look at the aerial view. Oop, I gotta. I'm thinking you meant maybe to um, yep. I'm, the yeah, east that that, um, that driveway, right? Yes, I think that's what you mean. Yeah, because yeah, it's going to follow the same footprint come across. So if they pull to the end, they should be able to see. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it does help. Thank you. Here's an aerial view if that helps mm -hmm. too. Yeah, so that driveway is a ways from that fence line. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, we'll close the public hearing and we'll discuss it among ourselves. Did you get your question answered? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, the only the only comment I would have is it based upon that particular lot. I mean, that truly is their backyard. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's I, what I, I would, thought too. I would, I would strongly support it. <laughs> okay, um, we'll come back into the public hearing, and may I have a motion, please? So moved. Seconded. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Will the secretary call the roll? Mowen. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Ostrowski? Yes. Lager? Yes. Waddle? Yes. Ennis? Yes. Your request for your variance has been granted. Well, thank you. You're welcome. The next one, the third one, and I believe the people are with us, are Scott and Ann Litton, 231 Winfield Drive, have requested a variance to allow the construction of a six foot tall fence in the 35 foot front yard setback <laughs> corner lot. Fence would be the, in the front yard that faces Pearl Street, which would be two feet taller than the maximum allowable height of four feet. Heather? Thank you. So we're looking at a very familiar section of the code again tonight, <laughs> section 150.91 fences. Again, it's section B where four feet when placed within a required front yard setback is the maximum height. Under section 150.16 is a bulk and density regulation. So in other words, the setbacks for um, the structure are determined there. And in this case, they're actually zoned R1 single family, which is a little more of um, um, a larger setback requirement. So instead of the 25 feet, it's 35 feet required from that uh, front property line. And again, it's a corner lot, so it's got the two front yards. Here's an aerial view of the property. So Winfield is really where the house faces. And then the other front yard is along Pearl Street. Um, just to give you an idea too, there also was a variance issued for this property to have a six foot fence back in November 9th of 2011. And I have a copy of that, um, but it was only um, at that time requested to be a smaller portion within the front yard. So instead they wanna go further down that property line. So I will send around that drawing. I highlighted what was approved just again to give you a sense of what was approved in the past. Using pictometry again, we show you the view from Pearl again, and then the front of the home from Winfield. 
and then the side of the home that would be facing the south and then it gives you a better idea at least of the backyard they already have very tall uh, evergreens there or whatever type of spruce that is and then here's looking at the back of the home so that'd be facing west there's pictures of the front of the home from winfield and then this would be looking along pearl street again you'll see that existing six foot fence that was approved another picture of the house looking from pearl a little further back showing again that existing fence and where that actually stops with the evergreens and then this was a sketch that was part of your packet um, they already have a permit to do a six foot fence where it's legally permissible by the zoning code so that's highlighted and then again, this shows the existing six foot and then heading back further to that rear yard. We did not receive any written or verbal correspondence about this request. An advertisement was placed in the newspaper of general circulation as required. A site notice was placed at the site. The other notice is required by the administrative code or post in the proper time and location. A letter was mailed first class mail to the tax mailing address of the owner and joining property owners. Therefore, all the procedural requirements for the hearing have been met. Thank you. Um, Mr. or Mrs. Litton, yep. you want to come to the, the podium, please? And then give your name and address and, and tell us why not being granted this request is considered a hardship for you. Uh, it's Scott Litton. It's 231 Winfield. Uh, and the fence was going to come inside the Arbor Vitae zone. I don't know if you saw the map or it wouldn't be seen. Uh, uh, the, the first part of it is going through there is like Deer Highway. <laughs> Um, and we'll have anywhere from five to 10 to 12 deer in our yard, two to three nights a week. Uh, they like eat all of our hostas, plants, flowers, vegetables. Um, so we also got a new puppy uh, <laughs> in our yard. You wouldn't believe it. If you walk through it, it's just like covered in deer feces. Like it's just everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like on snowy nights, you can just see them. There'll be like 10 of them just laying out there. They'll actually be on our patio, like right up right here outside the patio door. We'll be like, shh, shh. Uh, <laughs> they empty our bird feeders. Uh, so mainly uh, the fence is to keep the deer out. We could literally get away with a four foot fence to keep the new puppy in, but deer are still gonna come in, their feces, their fleas, their ticks. Uh, and the thing about it is it would never ever be seen from Pearl Street because it'll be inside those 25 foot Arbor Vitae's which are like fully mature and grown together. Right. Okay, thank you. Anybody on the board have any questions? He answered them. Yeah, he <laughs> did. I, had a chance to ask him, so. I think he's got a real hard too. <laughs> yes, indeed. The, um, the, actually, the only question I have really is more for Heather. Looking back at that, previous uh, approval, and I should know this by now, but I take it that he has to ask for this variance because, you know, I saw that we didn't change anything or make any restrictions to the length at the point in time we approved that one. But I take it that based upon the drawing that he submitted is the, is the driver in terms of that approval. You're exactly correct, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I want to clear. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll close the public hearing and here to discuss this. Also move to accept. Is there a second? Second. All right, we're back in public hearing now, so we'll I'm sorry, sec who's, who's seconded? Chris. 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 Okay. Thank you. These secretaries, <clears throat> they just can't keep up with things. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Lucky, lucky. Will the secretary call the roll, please? All right. Johnson? Yes. Ostrowski? Yes. Plager? Yes. Waddle? Yes. Ennis? Yes. Moen? Yes. Request for your variance has been granted. Thank Good you. luck with the puppy and the deer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Three different ways so far tonight. <laughs> the, the, ne the fifth one is Ed Schumann, 629 South Summit Street, has requested a variance to allow the reconstruction of a 12-foot, 8-inch by 21-foot addition, a portion of the existing attached garage, 
which would encroach seven feet six inches into the 10 foot required side yard setback from the property line to the north and, and would encroach two feet into the 30 foot required rear yard setback from the property line to the east. Heather? Madam Chairwoman, you skipped number four, Mr. Patterson. Oh, I'm sorry. You okay? <laughs> um, we'll, well, we'll go back to him. <laughs> okay, sorry, no Patterson. problem. I just got to skip ahead here. Okay, so under the zoning code, section 150.16, bulk and density regulations, um, this is what's required for building setbacks. So um, the garage we're discussing is an attached garage. So that's considered part of the house and the side yard setback is a minimum of 10 feet. And then the rear yard is a minimum of 30 feet. Um, also under section 150.77 about damage non-conforming buildings and structures, a non-conforming building or other structure which is damaged by fire, explosion, flood, riot, demonstration, public enemy, or other cause to the extent of more than 60% of its reproduction value at the time of damage shall not be restored, except in conformity with the regulations in the district in which it is located. So in this case, there was quite a bit of um, damage to the garage, you know, it's an older over time. And so they wish to replace that same footprint, but they do need your permission to do so. Here's an aerial view of the property. There actually is two parcels involved. So the main parcel where the house and garage are, and then um, the same property owner does own this very long strip of property, but in zoning, we do have to go by that main parcel since those, as far as we're aware, are not attached parcels. So I just wanted to make that clear. Um, also, I believe since your packets were sent, there's some additional information from the contractor or property owner that may determine that 30 foot rear yard setback is not needed, that they do meet that. So I'll let whoever is here to discuss that move forward with that. Uh, using pictometry, we show you some, again, some different views of the home. So here's the side of the house. Here's looking at the front of the house. You can kind of see the garage there and then the back half. The other side of the property, again, you can see a better view of the garage there. And then looking at the back of the property, you can also see that um, existing garage footprint. And then here's a picture of the front of the property with the garage specifically. And then here's looking at the back of the garage, you can see some of the repairs already started. Another view of that a little closer up. And then looking between the house and where that garage is attached. And then again, a more of an interior view of the garage. The sketch that was part of your packets is also attached. We did not receive any written or verbal correspondence from any of the neighbors. An advertisement was placed in the newspaper of general circulation is required. A site notice was placed at the site. The other notices required by the Ministry of Code were posted in the proper time and location. A letter was mailed first class mail to the tax mailing address of the owner and adjoining property owners. Therefore, all the procedure requirements for the hearing have been met. Thank you. Mr. Suman. Okay, just a second. Uh, if you're going, who's going to testify here? I figured you'd get a little bit from both. But okay. There was a letter. Okay. Okay. All right, Edward Suman, six two nine South Summit Street, Bowling Green, Ohio, four three four zero two. Um, as he said, there is a letter. I don't know who gets this. Or... He was here, and I'll read it into the record for you. Thank you. That's the neighbor. Oh. Okay, this is a letter from for the for the record from Mary Ann Stretchberry at 625 South Summer Street, Bowling Green, Ohio, 43402. It says planning department. I am not against Ed Suman's variance as long as it is on his property and not on mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what Mr. Suman is doing at 629 Summit Street is making his property look so much better. He has even added a large front porch on his house. Really an improvement. Thank you, Marianne Stretchberry. Okay. Um, a little back history. I, I bought that house. Um, I didn't even know that there was property line issues with that house. She's actually, the, Marianne's actually the one that explained it all to me. Um, and that was after the purchase was done. 
the garage was in real bad shape to begin with. So that was one of the contingencies with the USDA loan that I had um, that had to be, that wall had to be fixed and they, they fixed part of it. Um, I don't know if there was any permits to that because that was all with the realtor and stuff. Um, you know, since then I've been divorced and my wife or my ex-wife was in that house for several years. That house was pretty much a nuisance to many of the neighbors. Um, and then I won the house back in the divorce and I've done nothing but try to upgrade it and fix it and get it all back together and looking nice for the community and stuff. Um, as far as that garage, um, I did make the mistake of starting that stuff. I didn't realize that there was all the approvals and stuff needed that I apologize for that. Um, but we're just trying to replace exactly the way that it was. Make it safer and all that good stuff. Questions, comments? It's going to go back on the exact same footprint that it was in height and everything. Yeah. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that's. Yes, yeah, so you can come up and tell us who you are and so for the rec purposes of the record and then you can comment. Chris Fox and um, um, I got laid off from COVID. You, you so want to give us your address, oh, please? Uh, 619 South Summit Street. Okay. I'm Marianne's other neighbor. Okay. So, um, little corner of area. Anyway, um, so what's happening there is it's the... the the rebuild is going on exactly where the original was. There's a six foot six inch curb where the original structure was built. On some of the pictures, we're supposed to identify like every, all, all the new walls are put in the back of the mm -hmm. And um, there's a there's a change to roof line. We're just going to extend the same roof line from the front of the garage all the way back mm -hmm. because they had a gable in the back and that created a mass amount of water damage. You have a roof gable, dead roof. Mm -hmm. And um, that's been approved by county already. They're just waiting, pending variance ruling. For the, for the okay. Okay. That was my question. That property doesn't all filled with trash like that now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Hmm. Okay, yeah. let's go into the. Uh, Private, uh, private hearing. Anybody had anything to ask each other or talk about? Well, my concern was the water from yeah. the roof line. Um, I was going to ask that, that new question, roof line but he, makes he sense. Yeah. done that. So I accept your answer. I, but that's what I was concerned about too, because it's so close to the other building. Um, we'll come out of the uh, private and go in, go public. Uh, may I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. <clears throat> Chris. Chris made it, and you, and I think Dave seconded. Um, I would also ask that we make sure we get the clarification on the rear yard setback, whether it's needed or not. I don't want to speak for them. You so. have, and you request your variance the a two foot, two feet into the thirty foot required rear yard setback from the property line to the east. Is that still something that's viable that you need? It is my property. That back property is my property. So. Okay, then do you do you want to withdraw that request from the variance? But I, I'll tell you what, before they, before I, they I would, answer that, I would leave my, it there. my feeling I would, would be, leave, yeah, leave it there. there. I would leave it there. No issue. If you want, yeah, yeah I, I mean, it's there. there. It's yep, there. you got it. That was exactly would be, yeah. yep. I would leave it alone. Can't hurt to, if you don't use it, you don't use it. Okay, so well, we, the variance is read into the record is what you're requesting. Okay, it's so what we're voting on. Secretary, call the roll. All right, Leaguer? Yes. Waddle, yes. Ennis? Yes. Mowen? Yes. 
Johnson? Yes. Ostrowski? Yes. Your request for your variance has been granted. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, Mr. Patterson, I'm sorry. 404 South Maple Street has requested a variance to allow the construction of a six foot tall fence in the 25 foot front yard setback corner lot. Fence would be in the front yard that faces Ordway Avenue, which would be two feet taller than the maximum allowable height of four feet. Heather? Thank you. Again, we're looking at the zoning code, section 150.91, fences under B, maximum of four foot when placed within a required front yard setback. And in this circumstance, we got another corner lot. So there's two front yards. This property is zoned R2 single family. So under section 150.16, bulk and density regulations, the building setback for the front yard is 25 feet. As you can see by this aerial view of Ordway and South Maple, there are two parcels there and then the home. Using pictometry, you'll see a view of the home. This is the side of the property, so this would be facing north. And then here is another view of the property. This would be, it, the street here would actually be Ordway. And then here's a better view of the well, I guess I'll say front again, even though it appears to be the side of the house where the garage is and where he would like to place that six foot fence near the garage area. And then another view of the actual where the house faces, which is South Maple. Using pictures, we'll see the actual corner of the house there. A little closer up. And then here's um, a portion of that existing uh, four foot fence that he wishes to replace with the six foot. And then here's another picture facing angled there more looking at the property. Here's a sketch that was part of your packets where we tried to highlight there the fencing that he would like to replace. And now I can read the email I tried to read earlier yes, from a neighbor <laughs> uh, from Julie Rabin, uh, received Monday, October 5th, 2020 at 6.01 p.m. to the planning department general email Subject 404 South Maple Street, request for variance for fence height. Hello, my name is Julie Rabin and I live at 410 South Maple Street next door to 404 South Maple Street. Today I received notice of a zoning hearing and I wanted to give some feedback. I am perfectly fine with the six foot tall fence around the property at 404 South Maple. I hope you will grant the owners a variance. Thank you, Julie Rabin, 410 South Main Street, Bowling Green, Ohio, 43402. An advertisement was placed in the newspaper of general circulation is required. A site notice was placed at the site. The other notices required by the Ministry of Code were posted in the proper time and location. A letter was mailed first class mail to the tax mailing address of the owner and adjoining property owners. Therefore, all the procedure requirements for the hearing have been met. Mr. Patterson. Good evening. Um, yeah, it was- uh, Name and address. I'm sorry, John Patterson, <laughs> uh, 404 South Maple here in Bowling Green. Um, yeah, the, uh, the house when we bought it five years ago, uh, mm -hmm. it was put my, my children in. Um, they went to school here, uh, saving the money on the dorms, but the house needed lots of uh, upgrades and, and fixes. Um, this is one of the final things I've got. Uh, the entire fence around the backyard um, was in really, really poor shape. My uh, daughter recently, uh, her and her husband have moved back into the house now. She had graduated a couple of years back and went off to the military. They're now back home. Um, she works in the Humane Society, so and she has dogs of her own. So there is always a concern with a four foot fence and a dog. Um, but just aft of my house, just behind my house, uh, the new Sleek Academy is in there now as well. Um, and maybe 30 feet behind my back fence, Every morning, every afternoon, they do a flag ceremony out there. Uh, really nice to see, but I am concerned, you know, children, you know, walk up to a four foot fence and, you know, my daughter would like to keep her dogs in the backyard without, you know, that type of concern. There's also, as you can see, I mean, I, I rough sketched it in at the last minute, but there is a, a small water feature back there as well. Um, it can't be more than 30 inches deep, but there is a, a small pond back there as well. Uh, that I'm concerned about. And at the same time, while I was replacing it, I just wanted to continue that six foot fence. That's on an existing fence line that's 
been there for a long time as far as I can tell. So I'm not really changing the footprint. If I am uh, on the very front, it's hard to tell from the sketch, but I think I'm actually moving back into my property line, maybe eight to 10 inches from where it currently sits, just to keep things aligned with the garage, um, a visual thing. Um, but yeah, it's just the yellow area there. Um, there is trees uh, and, and shrubs in, in that area. Um, so I don't know that neighbors would necessarily lose a whole lot anyway. Um, and uh, I, I can't use the excuse of deer, although I'm wondering as well now if some of my plants didn't disappear this year to deer, I wondered where they went. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really just that. It's just replacing the four foot that's there with a six foot. Hey, anyone else care to? You're going to re be replacing the entire fence line though, correct? Yeah, I, I've already replaced everything by permit right. previously granted to me. I've already done that. And in the pictures, I mean, I'm sorry that you saw that my construction that's going on back there, but yeah. uh, I've actually left that area open for the time being, hoping that this was going to go through so I didn't have to, you know, tear out something, okay. you know, put a four foot in there and tear it back out for the six foot. So right now it is mm -hmm. open. Um, and if, if I can get the six foot, it'll be completed here in the next week or so. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Okay, I'll close the public hearing and we'll discuss the request. Anybody have anything they'd like to look at? Okay, we'll come back into public hearing and may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Dave made it, Chris seconded. Secretary, call the roll, please. Okay. Uh, Waddle? Yes. Ennis? Yes. Mowen? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Ostrowski? Yes. Flager? Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Your request for your variance has been granted. Thank okay. you. This is my first time. Is it? I've got work calling me. Um, is there any need for me to stay any no, longer? No, you, you, you're free to go, but you might want to check with the city to get the, make sure you have the proper paperwork to okay. construct your fence. Just okay. call tomorrow or? Um, actually, Friday. We'll be in the office if you don't mind, and we Perfect. can touch base then. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the sixth one, and I'm not sure this gentleman has been sworn in. Um, this is Paul Popic. That's correct. Okay, were you sworn in, sir? Yes. Okay. Okay, the sixth variance is Paul Klopik has requested the following variances for Garden Grow Town Homes, 1005 North Grow Street. He has three different requests. I'm going to take each one separately, and we'll vote on each one separately. The first one is to allow the construction of a six-foot-tall fence <clears throat> around an existing dumpster in the 25 foot front yard setback, which would be two feet taller than the maximum allowable height of four foot. I need to recruit myself from this uh, part Thank of the hearing. You. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> let the, very, let the, the minutes show that Chris Ostowski recused himself from this and left the, uh, the table for the board. Heather? Well, the way I have my presentation organized, it's Put everything it all together. All together. Yeah, so if you ahead. don't mind, um, I won't reread all the variances. So again, section 150.91 fences. We have the same requirement under B that a maximum of four foot tall when placed within a required front yard setback and it must not violate the visibility triangle, which is under section 150.05. In this case, there already is a permit to do six foot along the property line, but not within the front yard setback. And he does wish to enclose the existing dumpster. And also applicable under the zoning code is section 150.55 outdoor advertising. Under section A, a monument or ground signs not exceeding eight foot in height may be located as close as 10 feet to the right of way. In this case, they do wish to add two ground signs or monument signs. In addition to the two existing wall signs that are on the buildings, my only assumption is that those have been up for decades and they have no record in the file. So we wanted to make sure that we 
to um, make those legal if, if it is approved and also to add the two new signs. So also under the section under I-4, for reasons of public safety, apartment complex and subdivision entrance signs located on the property in a residential district may have an aggregate square footage of 14 square feet and may not exceed five feet in height. So in this request, that would exceed the actual total aggregate. Here's an aerial view of the property. You can see it is unique in that it does have um, uh, basically faces Fairview Avenue along with North Grove where that dead ends. Using pictometry, you can see the existing complex. And using pictures, you can see this is the Fairview side and you can see where the existing dumpsters are on a existing concrete pad. And then we happen, happen to capture there one of the existing wall signs. And this is looking along Fairview again, a little better view of those existing dumpsters. This is on the North Grove side. So you can see again, there's another existing wall sign. And then this in general shows the area where they wish to put another monument sign there. Or I should say a new monument sign. Here's another view. This is looking from Fairview at the property where you can see the dumpsters there. A little bit closer up looking at the dumpsters. And then this is some of the information that was part of your packet. So there is the dumpster enclosure highlighted there in red where they wish to have the six foot fencing. And then that shows the existing or the excuse me, the existing permit we have on file to add the privacy fence along that um, property line there to the north. Part of your packet was submitted these two star shapes show where they would like to place those monument signs. And then here's a drawing also showing that setback that would be approximately six feet from the right of way of the sign along Fairview. And then the section second sketch would show that along North Grove. And that is not a setback issue, but again, it's just to show that it would exceed that total square feet. Here's some pictures that were also submitted as part of the packet. So again, showing the three by six foot existing wall sign. Another one showing the three by six foot on another building existing wall sign. And then here's a rendering of the monument sign. They wish to add two of those again, one on one near Fairview and one near North Grove. We did not receive any written or verbal correspondence from any of the adjoining property owners. Mm -hmm. An advertisement was placed in the newspaper of general circulation as required. A site notice was placed at the site. The other notices required by the administrative code were posted in the proper time and location. A letter was mailed first class mail to the tax mailing address of the owner joining property owners. Therefore, all the procedure requirements for the hearing have been met. Thank you. Mr. Kwapik? Yes, Paul Kwapik. Uh, office address is 221 Allen Street, Maumee, Ohio. And uh, appreciate the group hearing, hearing us out on this. Um, it's just, when it comes down to it, it's really a beautification project. Um, we have had some challenges with our dumpster um, in the short time since we've taken ownership. Um, and um, we're, we're thinking there's two issues with either the public coming and dumping in our dumpster just due to the visibility. Um, and as well as our neighboring residents we're thinking are coming over and throwing trash in. So. Um, as discussed, we want to line a, a, a nice, they're, they're going to be all white vinyl six foot privacy fences, um, as well as our dumpster enclosure. Um, again, beautify the neighborhood, screen the dumpster, as well as um, hopefully cut down on the illegal dumping that's currently occurring. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address this request? Members of the board, do you have any questions or comments? <laughs> Mr. Quas, oh, go ahead. No, I, this is just on the dumpster. This is just on okay. the dumpster. Oh, okay. Better yeah. But. This is just the dumpster. Mr. Kwapik, how often, uh, how many times a week are those uh, bins empty? Yeah, I, I don't know that answer, to be honest. Uh, I'd have to check with my on site manager. I, I, I know it's either one or two times a week. Um, I can look through my files here to see if I can find their, their bid real quick, just to make sure. Give me one second. I can see if I can pull it up. Okay. 
Okay. Here it is. One time per week. Once a week. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And those are just, just for the record, those are six yard dumpsters. There's two of them sitting there. I have a question for you. Do, uh, do you think that the privacy fence will stop the people from coming over there and putting stuff behind them? Or I, I, I hope so. I hope so. Okay. I, I certainly can't, of course, guarantee that, but you know, that dumpster is for use for our residents only. So um, that would certainly be the intention is to make sure our residents are, are the only ones using it. Um, in defense of that, uh, having been a former contractor, I can tell you that a dumpster is Magnet. is an open uh, <laughs> invitation to everybody in the neighborhood to throw their things in. You have to watch them all. So that's difficult to police that. Anything else? Okay, we'll go into um, close the public hearing. Members of the board, any questions or comments? My, I guess my only question is, it's the it's the fencing around the dumpsters and then also along the no, along drive. It's just around just, the dumpsters. Just the dumpsters. Just okay. around the dumpsters. Okay. Correct. Yes. No, right. Just around the dumpsters. I mean, I would hope it would stop it. I went out there and looked at it today. There's mattresses. Mattresses stuff piled up behind it. Yeah. Okay, uh, may I uh, come back into the public hearing and may I have a motion, please? Also move. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded for the construction of a six foot tall fence around an existing dumpster. Will the secretary call the roll, please? Ennis? Yes. Mowen? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Flager? Yes. Waddle? Yes. The request for your variance for the construction of your fence has been granted. We're now going to work. To, the second one is to exceed the 14 square foot total maximum sign aggregate by 47 square feet to allow the construction of two 33 inch by 60 inch mon monument signs and to continue the use of two existing 36 inch by 72 inch wall signs. I believe that anybody have any questions or want to see that Heather's presentation on that again i have a question sure. based on where the monument signs are going to be placed that's a large area of visibility why do you need the signs on the side of the yeah. building now yeah. that you're looking at yeah. that was time. my question or as well. why do you need the monument sign yeah. see the one on the wall okay i agree yeah i agree mr Klavik, would you like to address that yeah so it it, it it for us it's a visibility and a marketing tool that I believe we need because I, the building signage currently cannot really be seen by, by passerbys. So for, for us, it's, it's just continuing to, to market the project and, um, and make sure it can be seen, you know, by the public and vehicles passing by. And I will note, we have reduced the sign of that, or the, excuse me, the size of that signage um, fairly significantly from our original plan and uh, where we, typically have signage on our other projects. So we have tried to keep it down to um, as small as we thought would be, you know, useful there for that reason. Will those signs be facing the main roads like the Grove and to Frazee? I think it's or yeah. one of the other roads. Yeah. Will they be Fairview. facing Fairview. those roads? Fairview. Fairview. Oh, Fairview, excuse me, Fairview. So um, is Dana fair, is, is there, is, is my signage contractor, I was hoping he would be there from Toledo yeah. Sign, is, is Dana here? Uh, Dana Fairchild, 1941 Northtown, Toledo, Ohio, okay. 43611. Yeah, the signs would be perpendicular to the road. And what we're asking for is the variance on the Fairview side. If we go from that 40 foot back from the 10 foot setback, that it'll be in the parking lot and there'll be no chance for snow removal there. So we're asking for that variance to move it up a little bit so that they can get snow behind it and not damage the sign. Yeah, I understand it, but if it's facing that, when you go along that road, you see a monument sign and you see this, the same direction, this huge sign up on a building. Uh, not the, necessarily. I mean, if you're driving straight down the road, you're gonna see a sign. You're not necessarily looking to the, to the right on a building to see what it is. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I find it very challenging to, to locate that signage when you're just driving through. And getting the address on there is very important as well. Yes. 
could I ask a question? Sure. Uh, would you be willing to, uh, in lieu of receiving the monument, which is a handsome uh, monument sign, uh, to receive that would take the signs off the building? So my challenge with that is, you know, when you're dealing with exterior masonry brick that's there, um, my concern is we remove that and all of a sudden we're dealing with water issues going behind the signage. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible. I just, I, I, I would find it challenging and somewhat problematic if we have to remove and, and try to seal those, those holes that are put in place. Um, so my preference would certainly be not to um, for that reason. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, board, let's discuss it. Well, ma'am, I, um, as I said, uh, I, this is a very nice friend. Right. Very nice. Right. And it would be right. an improvement right. over Definitely. what is there. Definitely. That's uh, got a lot of dignity and sophistication. So I credit to you. Thank you. <laughs> However, um, I'm troubled by the redundancy right behind it of the existing signs that are less appealing and less attractive and old fashioned. Um, so um, it troubles me that we have signs. You know, we work so hard at trying to watch all the signs that we put on building and I'm all for marketing, but- um, These would make a much better marketing tool than the signs that are on the building. Well, it's a very handsome yeah. rendering. Um, I'm just, um, concerned that uh, the redundancy may not be necessary. I agree with you. I, 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 I go down that. and took a look at them and visualize with the placement. And those mm -hmm. signs do look great. They really do. But then, like Hobie said, you look up and if you're trying to put a facelift on it, that's your facelift, not keeping that other sign, which is outdated and really doesn't do anything. Because once you see that, that's where your focus Building. Yeah, but usually everybody has a pylon sign and they identify their building as well. I mean, that's just you know, 90% of the places that do have their building is identified as well. What if we upgraded? I would, I would only, and I think we're still in the, yes. in the, in the, not in the public right. session, we're correct? Still we're in the, private. In the yep. okay. still in the private. All right. Oh, sorry. And, and I, and I, I guess a couple of things for, from my point of view, first of all, I, I understand a little bit of the concern about the uh, masonry issue, but I also know that Dana and his crew and other folks can easily repair uh, the holes. I mean, people are constantly, unfortunately, putting things up on, on the brick buildings and, and repairing the, the, I guess the second thing is, uh, I, I fully agree that it's redundant or if you need to identify the building specifically, and an address on that building is sufficient if you've got this pedestal right. sign. That's just my personal feeling. Yep. And I guess uh, I, I would, I'm not sure if it's proper, Heather, for me to, to actually say this out loud, but my feeling would be, I would vote no if he didn't make the adjustment. And, you know, not that we actually want to lead them to that, but, you know, I'll just say it so that yeah. if yeah. if we need to ask the question. I would agree. So if you want to throw me off you. No, <laughs> no you're fine. No, I would agree with that. Okay. So are we allowed to approve with a contingency? Is that how that works? Okay. But but I guess but the, 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 the he question needs, he needs to take the 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 gentleman who brought the requested variance, he would need to voluntarily take off uh, the, the, the existing, um, the two existing 36 signs. inch by 72 inch wall signs. Right. He would need to withdraw that. Right, and I, and I guess the, the, the question that we'd also want to verify, and Heather, you're probably gonna have to scramble here real quick in terms of, would we still need a variance based upon the total square footage of the pedestal signs? Yes, because yes. Okay. one alone I think is around what, 14? Or 12 and a half, I think. I think one sign is 12 and a half. So, and 14 is the maximum. 
Yeah, okay. it's, they're two feet taller. You'd than still the, need, you'd still exceed the, the aggregate. Yeah, than the okay. uh, maximum allowable height. Okay. Mr. Klopik, you've heard the conversation. We're back in public hearing. Um, do you Can I offer a suggestion to see if the group would, would entertain it? You may offer a suggestion, sure. What if we overlaid the existing building signage with updated graphics and left it in place? In my mind, I believe no, that's no, not answering our no, concerns. No, that's, that's not answering the concerns. Um, but I, I would like to ask my first question again, Mr. Pappage. And sir, I'm, I'm going to ask you again. I know you answered before, but I wasn't clear on that response because it was sort of, I would I prefer not. Um, I would like a, you know, a, a confirmed yes or no. Would you be willing to take down the signs on the buildings so that the other sign, the more modern sign can be erected by variance tonight? My challenge is I don't know the existing conditions behind that sign. And so my fear is you pull a sign that's been up there for however long, 30 years, it, it could open up a really big can of worms. And so I guess, you know, I'd have to talk to Dana about what that process looks like. And, you know, my concern is you have brick that it gets damaged and all of a sudden we have tuck pointing issues and it really just it becomes cost prohibitive for me overall when I'm just trying to make a beautification of the neighborhood in general. Um, that's my concern, you know? So <clears throat> again, I, I, I know I'm not giving you a direct answer, but the reason is I just don't have enough information to, I just don't want to backtrack and have to pull that sign off and get into a really big issue. Um, would I be willing to take it down if it's in great condition and Dana can seal it up? Fine. Fine. I, I would be willing to do that. But again, my concern is we start taking it down and, and it looks terrible behind it. And you know, the bricks two different colors or, you know, you just don't know when a sign's been up there for so long. So that would be my one concern with it. If right, that makes so sense. Then, so then you wish us to go ahead and vote on this variance the way that it is, that it is presented, correct? And, and I guess my, my question then would be what, it seems like we may be headed for a no vote. So what is, what are my options at that point? Um, if it's just, your options at that point are to go ahead with this and and we'll and we'll vote or you can withdraw the the uh, the, the request for the construct the two existing 36 inch by 72 inch wall signs you you'll take those signs down in lieu of putting up the monument signs is is it appropriate for me to ask Dana's opinion I know we're kind of living in weird times here with me not being in the room is it okay to ask Dana's opinion on this? Because he's the expert, you know, he's obviously very good at what he does to uh, see his opinion. Can, on the only thing we can do to it is, is silicone in the holes. That's the only thing we can do. It, it comes to tuck point and things like that. And well, what you are going to have is a dark area behind that because the UV rays have hit that building for 30 years or however long that sign's been on there. It's going to be dark area behind that building, no matter what you do, unless you cover it back up with something else. Well, or you wouldn't use silicone. You would point those. No, we we don't we we don't do well, building I mean, restoration. All we do is silicone in the holes. Would be, I would imagine that would be the, what a contractor would do. Yeah, that, that that is all we do is silicone. So I would just I guess I would kindly ask the group to just consider the fact that us removing that signage is to Dana's point and to my previous point. I think we're going to run a risk of that looking really rough and and with two different colors and. Uh, for me, a potential liability with water issues, you know, this, this just could open up a really big can of worms. So I just respectfully I, I would ask the group to consider. And again, I would be willing to, to increase the scope of work to update the overlay of that sign. You know, if the group I know made a comment about it being dated, zero problem, you know, and spending a little bit more money and maybe just overlaying the existing sign to match our, our monument sign. No problem. I just, it's going to open up a big can of worms, and I really think would take a step back on on our beautification project. We're underway there. Okay, um, then we're going to we're going to vote on the uh, the variance is written to exceed the 14 square foot total maximum sign <clears throat> aggregate by 47 square feet to allow the construction of two 33 inch by 60 inch monument signs and to continue the use of two existing 36 inch by 72 inch wall signs. May I have a motion? 
So moved. Second. Second. Chris. Will the secretary call the roll? Ennis. No. Mowen? No. Johnson? No. Lager? No. Waddle? No. Your request for your variance was not granted. You always, of course, have the option of going to the Court of Common Pleas or, or changing it for the on and reappearing before the zoning board. Um, I believe it kind of negates the uh, the third request because that's a lot to allow one of the two proposed 33 inch by 60 inch monument signs to be located six feet from the city right of way proposed sign from Fairview Avenue, which would encroach four feet into the 10 foot required setback for monument signs. I believe that's negated because we just or just voted no on the uh, monument signs, correct? Well, I think the concern is the two existing signs. Okay. Still exceed All right. the limitations. We'll, we'll, we'll take on, we'll vote on, on we'll discuss the, uh, one of the two proposed 33 inch by 60 inch monument signs to be located six feet from the city right away. Proposed sign from Fairview Avenue, which would encroach four feet into the 10 foot required setback for monument signs. David, just Mr. Verdana, do you want to address that? Just again, though, the, the only reason we need to move that up a little, would need to move that up a little bit is if I if I put it back to the ten feet, it would be in the parking lot, so okay. that would be in the way of snow removal and all things. So we would request a variance to move it up, so it at least get three foot behind it, so snow can be pushed around it and not damage the sign. Okay. Questions, comments? Hearing none, we'll go into private. Members of the board. Comment. This is just one. This correct. is just one monument sign, correct? Okay. The other one on the other side on Grove is fine. Okay. Well, I, all I want to say is, unfortunate uh, that we're at this spot because I don't think, judging from what I'm listening to, the empathy that I'm hearing, or at least sympathy of that, uh, from the people that are here, that. They would like that improvement for the sign on, on the property, but uh, we're not at that juncture. No. All right, we'll come back into public hearing. Uh, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Will the secretary call the roll? Uh, Johnson. No. Flager. No. Waddle. Yes. Ennis. Yes. Alwyn. Yes. Okay. That request for your variance has been granted. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody here who would, from the lobby who would like to visit with us? Hearing none, may I have a motion for uh, adjournment? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay, um, thank you all, and everybody stay because we have to sign off on paperwork. So that's not a. Heather, should I, should I circle oh. which one on these last three? <laughs> yes, please. Yep, that's why we did that. <laughs> right. so first one was. Yeah. Second one was. Heather, here's the letter for the.